How we doing, church? Everybody good? Woo, man, it's been a good day already, right? Well, man, we're, uh, we're in a series called A Life Like No Other, and uh, hopefully, prayerfully, we all want to live a life like no other, right? We want to live in a way that is set apart, that is different. Um, and uh, Jesus lived that life. He lived a life that was completely different, man. It set everything apart, changed everything. And uh, so uh, I know a lot of times we, uh, we can be going through life and things can happen that can cause us to have a little bit of anxiety, or maybe a little bit of worry, a little bit of fret. And, um, and uh, that's not where God wants us to live. And uh, I know uh, this week, you know, we've got uh, an eclipse happening. Anybody ready for the eclipse? You got your glasses, you know, or your, your welding mask or whatever you're going to use uh, to watch. Um, you know, and a lot of people get kind of panicky about that. I got a little guy down in Nicaragua who's always messaging me and telling me, you know, what's going on with their church. He's a pastor down there. He said, down there, they have to stay inside. They can't go outside. They have to make sure they have food and water. I'm like, it's an eclipse, dude. I mean, like, I've been watching these since I was a kid, you know, like fifth grade. You know, we were out there, you know, doing this, and you had to make a little box where the light would go in. You could see all that. You know what I'm saying? But people kind of get all worked up over this stuff. There was an earthquake in New York this week. I mean, I don't know if you guys noticed that, but uh, that was a big earthquake for that area, uh, one of the biggest ones in a couple hundred years. But you know what, everybody? Everything seems to be fine, right? But everybody can go into panic mode, and they can worry and fret and kind of get worked up into a frenzy over stuff like that. And there are some scriptures that talk about some of the things that will happen in the end times, but Here's the thing, we've been in the end times for a while. I don't know if y'all figured that out yet, but we've been in the end times for a while. So we ought to live like Jesus coming back anytime, right? I mean, he'd come back tomorrow. He'd come back today. You better be ready, right? And so uh, he can come back whenever he wants to, but it's, uh, it's really when the Father says, hey, it's time to go get to church. And so we just need to be prepared for that. And uh, so I want us to talk today about how to live a life of peace. Um, I think sometimes we don't uh, ever get there. Uh, there's plenty of you guys in this room that would say, that, hey, man, I'm a believer. I'm a follower of Christ. I put my faith in Jesus Christ, but you don't live with peace. And that's not what God's intention is for you. God wants you to live with peace. And, uh, and so how do we get there? How do we have this relationship? How do we have this peace that passes understanding? We see that in Scripture, right? So how do we get there? You know, and I see so many Christians that are worried and fretting and, you know, they're, they're going through life just wound tight whenever they ought to be going, you know what, man, I've, I've got peace. And so... I like this uh, definition here. It says, peace is a state of tranquility or quietness of spirit that transcends circumstances. In other words, circumstances don't dictate whether or not you have peace. You know, we see Apostle Paul, we see the disciples in prison singing songs and worshiping, having peace in the midst of a prison in chains, right? So it's not based on where you are. I think a lot of times, you know, you, know, you guys will post, uh, especially the ladies will post their pictures of their feet you know, and their legs or whatever in the sand. They'll say, hey, I'm in my happy place. I guess that's your peaceful place or where you really like to be. You know, and I don't know about you guys, but every time I go to the beach, man, there's bad traffic and all this stuff. So I don't know how y'all get peaceful out of that. Let's address that little stretch between the water where you can hear it and the waves are crashing. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But here's the thing. It's not tied to a place. It transcends circumstances, even places. Now, maybe the guys in here, you're thinking, hey, my happy place is on a golf course, or, or maybe it's at a lake or in the mountains or whatever, sitting there overlooking a valley. But it's not tied to a place. It's wherever we go. Because the God of the universe lives within us, for those of us that are believers. The Spirit of the living God is placed within us. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. So no matter where I go, I can have peace. Why? Because I have God in my life. So it's not based on my circumstances. And I think too often we have this mentality that we buy into that's all based on circumstances. You know, and so no matter what you're going through today, you know, we prayed this morning that there would be people that would walk through these doors that are, that are anxious and worried and fretting and stressed and, you know, full, life full of drama. We prayed that you would come so that you would understand how you can have peace. And so we pray for you to be here. But that's, that's what we're talking about today is peace. And so we serve the God of peace. We just got through worshiping the God of peace. There's one true God. There's one king. There's one, one ruler over all things. And that is, that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is God the Father. That is the Holy Spirit, a triune God that we worship. And so as we were singing these songs today, as you were singing them, hopefully you were worshiping in truth and in spirit. And you were going, you know what, man? I serve a powerful God. I serve an awesome God. There's nothing that he can't do. And, and so we, we, if we really want peace, we have to know the God of peace. And so if we know the God of peace, and I'm talking about not like, hey, I know about him, but I know him personally, I have a relationship with him. Last night we were, we had a group of men in here, had a great group of men in here last night. We had our crawfish bowl and there was a lot of shrimp and crawfish. It was all you could eat. And, uh, and so uh, 
Tony did a great job uh, teaching and sharing. And we had two guys put their faith in Christ last night. And uh, so y'all give it up for those guys, man. They're, they're part of the family of God. And so I went up to one of them afterwards. I didn't see, the, see who the other guy was, but I saw the one guy. I walked over to him. I said, hey, man, I saw you raise your hand for salvation. I said, do you know now, without a shadow of a doubt, Christ lives in your heart? And he goes, well, I've been going to church my whole life. And I said, hey, I get that. I said, you know, we can miss heaven by about 18 inches. We can know about Christ or we can know him in our heart. We can receive his spirit in our heart. And so I said, so my question is, where do you stand? He goes, man, I know Christ. I know him. I have a relationship with him. And so, so hopefully you have that relationship because it begins there. It all begins with God. God is the God of peace. And so let's look at a good bit of scripture today. We're going to move kind of quick. It says, may, now may the God of peace, there it is, the God of peace make you holy in every way. So this is writing to, to the church, writing to us, right? So m- now may the God of peace make you holy in every way. May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. So here's what we need to understand. The God of peace is working in us. And look what it says. May the God of peace make you holy in every way. And so a, a lot of times, you know, we see holy as something that, you know, that we, we really can't get there. But we're called to be holy for God is holy. We're to be set apart. Holy means to be set apart. So we should be different. We should live our lives different than the world lives this life. We should, we should treat people differently than maybe somebody who does not know Christ. We should be set apart. We should be different. Not following and not filling, fit, fitting in with the pattern of this world, but fitting in with what God's pattern is, what Jesus modeled, what Jesus lived out. And, and so if we look at that, if we really want peace, it says may, may we be holy in every way. And that's every way. That's in how you deal with your finances, how you deal with your taxes, Hopefully you're honest on your taxes, right? How you do that so that you're holy, you're set apart, you're different, you're above reproach. And how you deal with your relationships, how you deal with your friends, how you deal with your coworkers, how you deal with your boss, how you talk about them. So it's how you talk, how you treat people, how you look at people, what you allow into your eyes, what you allow into your ears. I remember growing up, my mom and dad would say, what? You know, that, that song is horrible. What, what are you listening to? I just like to beat mom and dad. Y'all remember that? And we all use that as an excuse at some point. You know, and you go, hey, I, I just like to be, it's just a good song, you know, whatever. And then you go back and you listen to it and as a believer. Now, I wasn't a believer at that point. I was lost as I could be. But at that point, I just wanted to listen to what everybody else was listening to. And it had a good beat. It didn't matter what it said. I was okay with that. You know, and, and it's funny, whenever you become a parent, you listen to things different than you did whenever you were a kid, right? Uh, so I, years ago, I was coaching baseball and we had a team that was horrible. I mean, they stunk. They couldn't catch a cold, man. And uh, I told them, man, you guys are horrible. Y'all like the Bad News Bears. And uh, they were like, who's the Bad News Bears? I said, you know what? I'm, we're going to watch that, that movie. And uh, one of the parents was like, have you watched that lately? And I was like, I hadn't seen it in years. And they was like, you might want to watch it again before you. And so I, I, I literally wanted to watch and see. What, and I mean, the first few minutes, I'm like, no, we're not watching this with kids, especially. But I'm not watching this. I don't even need to watch this junk. And so we have to think about, you know, God, I want to be holy in every area. What I listen to, what I watch, what I, what I speak, what I say, how I treat people, how I deal with my finances, whether I, you know, whether I work hard and earn my paycheck or I just kind of squeeze by or get by, you know, or just enough to keep everybody, you know, make, make them think I'm really working. But we really work as unto the Lord and not as unto man. So in every area... You know, we're to be blameless, we're to be above reproach, we're to be holy and set apart so that when people look at us, they go, there's something different about them. It's not what we bring to the table, it's what Jesus is doing in us. It's what God is doing to transform us and change us into the image of Christ. So if God is peace, then to know God is to bask in the peace, in his peace. And the closer we draw to him, the more of his peace we can enjoy. So if I really want peace in my life, and I I believe in a group this size, especially those watching online, that you are thinking, man, I, Mike, I need peace. Because, man, my life is, I'm, I'm, I'm stir crazy. I mean, I've got so much stuff going on. You know, I, I, I'm battling anxiety. I'm battling depression. I'm battling this. I'm battling that. I've got drama. There's so much drama. And some of you guys, maybe, maybe you like drama. Maybe you're one of those you like to stir it up, like to keep it kind of going. You know, and if, you know, if there's not drama, you don't feel like you're really living life. I'm just telling you, man, you bought into a lie. But you're going, you know what, man, I need peace. I need peace of mind. I need peace of heart. And I need that. So we're going to look at today, how do we get there? Because a lot of times people are, like I said, plenty of Christians will say that they know Jesus Christ, but they don't know peace. But yet, God is peace. And so we've got to understand, how, how do we get there? So if we really want to be, be able to bask in the, in, in the peace that God offers, we've got to know who He is, and we've got to know more about Him. We've got to know more about His Son and, and the Spirit that He places within us. 
says, come close to God. James 4, 8. I love James. He doesn't, he doesn't beat around the bush. He says, come close to God and God will clo- come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. It goes back to talking about being holy, being set apart, being blameless. He said, hey, wash your hands, you sinners. Pure, purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. You see, a lot of us, especially in the church, man, we really do want God. I mean, you guys wouldn't be sitting in here on, on a Sunday morning. You could go do other things. But you really do want some God. You just may not want all of God that he wants to give you, right? So you want some God, but you really do like the world. You really do like stuff, and you really do like things, and you really do like places, and you really do like travel, and you really do like money. And so you like a lot of what the world has, and you love that stuff, sometimes even more than the God you claim that you so I've surrendered to. So we, we, here's the thing, we, we can want both of those things, but there's only one that will really be the true God in our life, the really king, the Lord of our life, right? And, and so we look at this again, he says, wash your hands, you sinners. We're sinners, we're all broken. We're all sinners. We're in need of a savior. Everybody, it doesn't matter how much money you've got, doesn't matter how much stuff you've got, doesn't matter how little you've got, it all doesn't matter. It's all about, you know what, it's about my relationship with Christ. Purify your hearts. Make sure your heart's right. If you want peace, it starts with a pure heart. For your loyalty is divided between God and the world. So you got to decide, hey man, am I going to serve God or am I going to serve the world? Am I going to line up with the word of God, the things of God? Am I going to chase after those things or am I going to chase after the things of the world? Or am I going to try to do both and be divided? And if, there's, if you're divided, you know what that is? There's no peace. And there's no peace if you're chasing both of them. You, you don't ever win in either situation. And you got to go, God, you know, I want, I, want to, I want to have peace in my life. So peace starts with a right heart, having the right heart. And so the main thing we've got to be willing to ask, you know, and I would say we do this daily, multiple times throughout the day. Say, God, will you search my heart? Will you show me? Is there any offensive way in me? Is there anything that I've done that goes against your teaching, that does not line up with your word, that does not honor Christ, that does not bring, uh, bring honor to the Holy Spirit, does not bring honor to you? Is there anything I'm doing, holding on to, doing, continuing to do, a pattern, a stronghold? Is there anything I need to confess to you, I need to lay down, I need to let go of? And so we ought to ask that on a regular basis. So we, it starts with the right heart. So if I really want peace with God and I want peace with people, I've got to have my heart right. Because here's, let me tell you, man's heart is, is corrupt, it's broken. Our hearts are wicked. They're filled with all kinds of junk. And you know, we can put on a face and we can act like we really like people and love people, but inside we're jealous of them, we're envious of them, we hate them. We want to see them struggle. We want to see them stumble. We want to see them fall. But we can act like everything's all right. So it starts with the right heart. So here's a good question. Are you a pot stirrer or a peacemaker? Pot stirrer, you're always trying to stir the trouble up. In your house, are you the one that always has to have drama? I and mean, I'm sure there's some drama queens in here and some drama kings too, right? And so um, you always got to have a little drama. You're always trying to find out something on somebody. You're always trying to stir something up. You know, maybe you're, you're at your workplace. You're the drama. I mean, you know, and I, let me tell you, drama is just a bad thing in a workplace. If you're always the one that everybody's got to walk on eggshells around, or either you're the one that's always stirring stuff up, I'm just telling you, you're, you're working against God. Because God has called us to be peacemakers and to love people and to forgive people. And, and so too often what we do is we like to stir the pot. Maybe you're the gossip. You like, you love good gossip, right? And you love to, you know, hey, I'm going to pass this on to somebody and just say, hey, listen, y'all would be praying for such and such because this, 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 and this, right? We use prayer requests as a way to gossip and make sure that it's okay. And so maybe you're a gossip. Maybe you stir it up. Maybe, maybe you're all, you don't like, you don't like it unless there's a little tension, right? You feel like, hey, this is not, it's not exciting enough or whatever. But what if you were a peacemaker that you went to, if you knew two people didn't like each other, instead of trying to get them to kind of stir it up, what if you went to them and said, man, you know, why don't we talk down? Why don't we sit down and kind of talk through this? I'll mediate. I'll help. And so ask yourself, and I think most of us in the room probably know what we are. You know if you're one that tries to stir it up, or you know if you're one that is a peacemaker, that you love to bring about peace. You love to get people to be on the same page and hopefully forgive one another. So how do we live at peace with everyone? That almost seems impossible. It is without Jesus. How do you live at peace with everyone? It takes God changing your heart first. It starts right here. It, it, it takes God changing my heart, transforming my heart, changing my mind, changing the way I think, making it not about me, but about him and about his kingdom and his glory, right? And going, you know what, God, I, I want to die to self and I want to live for you. And so if we really want to get to this place where we're at peace with all people, we have to be willing to die to some things and crucify the flesh. And so how do we live at peace with everyone? 
In Romans 12, 9 and 10, it says, don't, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good. So what Scripture says right there is don't just pretend to love people, really love them. You know, and we can put on a face and we can act like, hey, you know, they just did something. Hey, man, that's awesome. Inside, you're going, dang, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't want that to happen to them. I wanted that promotion. I wanted whatever. You know, but instead, we really love them. We love people. I mean, we really care about them. And I, I think about a parent loving a child. A parent, a lot of times, there's, there's, a, there's a love for a child that can't be put into words. You know, I, I can remember whenever we, I had my first son, and I can remember telling this guy, I said, man, I don't know if I can love another kid as much as I love uh, Hunter, my firstborn. He goes, dude, you need to have two or three more kids just so you can begin to understand how much God loves everybody. And I was like, man, I don't know about that. And so as soon as I had Zach, my second one, dude, I was like, dude, he was right. And then I had my third one, I had Christian. I was like, I love all of them, man, with a love that can't be put into words. I mean, you just can't, I can't explain it. You know what I'm saying? And so I think about loving people. What if we had a love like a parent does for our kids? We, we want our kids to do well. We want them to flourish. We want them to be successful. We want them to, I mean, we want them to get everything in life that God has for them. What if we felt like that about other people? What if instead of about, you know, you hate somebody else's kid, but you love your kid. What if you loved everybody's kids the same way? What if you loved everybody with, hey, man, I want you to be successful. I want you to get all that God has for you. Man, I want you to be blessed and flourish. And I want you to, man, I want you to have peace. Instead of, man, hey, man, I want, the, I want them to fail or stumble or lose or whatever. Last night we were in here and uh, we were giving away a couple of door prizes at the, uh, the crawfish bowl last night. And, uh, and so we'd call out a number and you hear, oh, you know what that meant, right? Their number didn't get called. They didn't go, oh man, that's awesome, dude, I'm so glad you won. Woo! They didn't do that. There was a lot of, oh, the big sighs. So what if we really loved that person? We go, man, that's awesome, dude, I'm glad you won. And we celebrate with them, you know? But they say, hey, don't pretend to love others, but really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good. See, I think too often what we do is, we, 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 we hold on to the stuff. That's one of the few places where it says to hate things in Scripture. But we're to hate what is wrong. We're to hate sin. We're to hate envy. We're to hate jealousy. We're to hate greed. We're to hate, you know, this division. We're to hate those things, dissension. We're to hate those things. We're to hate sin. And so it says to hate what is wrong. So if you know you're in a relationship with people and there's things you're doing wrong, you should hate that. And it says to hold tightly to what is good. Loving them, forgiving them. We should hold tightly to that. You know, serving them, praying for them, blessing them, honoring them. That's what we should be holding tightly to. But too often what we do is we hold tightly to the sin and we hold loosely to the good stuff. And we've got to be able to say, God, I I want you to change my heart. My heart needs to change. Verse 10 says, love each other with genuine affection. In other words, it's real, right? You know, we like authentic, genuine. You know, that's kind of a, a word that we like to use nowadays. But genuine affection, you really do care for them. You love them, right? It says take delight in honoring each other. What if, what if we really honored one another? We encouraged one another. And we, we, we built them up. The Bible says to spur one another on to the Lord's love and good deeds. That we honor them. And they do something, man, well, man, that's awesome, man. We celebrate with them, right? Rather than being envious or jealous, which is sin, we honor them. Verse 14 says, bless those who persecute you. This is our enemy. You, how do you do that? My, it's, it's, it's only by the power of God. It's only by the Spirit of God. It says, bless those who persecute you. How do you bless those who persecute you? Because you pray over them, right? It says, don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. So the people that go against you, the people that you feel like run you down, try to tear up your character, they try to talk about you and cause division between you and your friends, the Bible says that you pray for them. So even our enemy, the ones that are coming against us, we go, God, I pray that you would get a hold of their heart. I pray that they would have peace. For whatever reason, they're trying to stir up all this drama and all this dissension, obviously because they're hurting in some way. And so, God, I'm praying for them. I'm praying that you'll heal their heart. Because if God changes their heart, and here's the thing, they're going to have peace, and they're not going to be doing what they've been doing. And if God changes my heart, then I'm going to have peace. So we are to pray for those who persecute us. It says, be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Be happy with those who are, who are happy. Like whenever somebody else wins a, a, a raffle or whatever, or a giveaway, you get, you're, you're happy for them. You're not like, dadgummit. You know, you're going like, dude, that's awesome. And then this last one, you weep with those who weep. Man, when somebody's going through a tough time, we empathize. We sympathize. And if they're weeping, sometimes we're moved to tears. 
and we weep with them because we know they're carrying a heavy burden. The Bible says, don't let your hearts be troubled. But I will say this, there are times my heart is heavy. And there's sometimes someone else's heart is heavy, so my heart's heavy. And we should say, God, you know, give me empathy. Help me to sympathize with them. Help me to pray with them. Help me to weep with them whenever they're hurting. And I'll do that because why? Because I love them and I care about what they're feeling and what they're going through. And so we should weep with those who weep. It says, live in harmony with each other and don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. I love that passage. It says, live in harmony. So in other words, we're all getting along, right? So Jesus prayed for unity. Father, let them be one as we are one in John chapter 17. So there should be unity. The devil is always trying to cause uh, division, right? He's always trying to cause factions and he's, you know, he's trying to cause separation. Anything he can do to cause division in, in a focused church is a healthy, powerful thing. But a divided church, man, is, is really unhealthy. And, and so believers, families, anything that the enemy can do to cause division, he's going to do that. So it says, live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. Well, who are ordinary people? We are. And it, it doesn't matter how much money you have. You're just an ordinary person. You've got a lot of money. You may have a lot of fame. So you're just an ordinary person with a lot of fame. You may be able to play basketball or whatever at a really high level. You know what? You're just an ordinary person that has a really good skill set in basketball or football or whatever. They're just ordinary people. That's all they are. And too, too often we become in, you know, enamored with them and we worship them. And here's the thing. They're just ordinary people. But I love it. It says, don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. So that's anybody. We ought to enjoy the company of people. And don't think you know it all. Boy, that's a great one. Because I don't know it all. But I know one who does know it all, right? You know, and the more that I spend time in his word, the more that I spend time in his Bible, the more that I spend time listening to him and talking to him and praying to him, that, that's, that's when I have peace. Then Romans 12 says here, never pay back evil with evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. In other words, someone wrongs you. You don't, you don't think about revenge and how you're going to get them back. What you do is you go, you know what, God, I want to handle this the way that you would have me handle this. And here's the thing. People will see that and they'll, they'll, be, they'll go, you know what, this person is honorable. That's a good man. That's a good woman. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. We're not looking for ways to stir it up. We're not looking for ways to cause division. We're not looking for ways to, you know, to separate and cause factions, if you will. But we're looking for ways to live in harmony. And to live at peace. And there's times, you know, we may disagree on some things. And we can agree to disagree without tearing each other apart. You know, you just got to be able to say, you know what, God, it's not about me winning and them losing. It's about us leaving each other whole. We've got to be willing to be okay with that. So to work at living in peace, Hebrews says the same thing. Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. There's holy life again. See, if you're really chasing after God, if you're really living a holy life, you're going to have peace. Because you're going to be dealing with the sin in your life like jealousy and bitterness and anger and rage and hate. You're going to deal with that because you're seeking God and you want to be holy. You want to be set apart. And you're going to have peace with God. And you're going to have peace with people because you're dealing with all that sin that's in your life. So we'll work at living at peace. It's work. Daily. We have to confess our sins daily. We have to ask God, search our heart daily. You know, and so we're working at that. We want to walk in, in unity with the Spirit. And so we've got to be able to say, God, help me to, help me to see you. So just look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. We're to look out for one another, care about one another. And we should care about where someone's going to spend eternity. Last night, the two men that raised their hand uh, for salvation, I was thinking, how awesome is that? You know, that those two men know where they're going to spend eternity. You know, they know that whenever they breathe their last breath, you know what? They will, they will literally uh, be in a right relationship with God. They'll step in and they'll breathe their first breath of heaven. We should care about where someone's going to spend eternity. We should care about where people are at in their walk with Christ. You know, not that we're legalistic and we're trying to tell them what they ought to do and ought to do and ought to do all this stuff. But we love them. We care for them. We pray for them. We intercede for them. It says, watch out that no, no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. And what we can let happen sometimes is we let bitterness get in our heart. And that thing becomes an infection, man. It affects us. And here's the thing. Because of what we have going inside of us, we spew out venom. We spew out hate. We spew out bitterness to the people around us, and it affects our family. So there's some of you, because of what you say around your kids and what you say around your spouse, they all hate somebody because you hate them. And so, look at it. It corrupts many. So mom, dad, whenever you spew that hate about your boss or your coworkers, you're corrupting your kids. You're pouring that venom, that poison out all over them. 
And they'll grow up to hate, and they'll hate their boss, and they'll hate their coworkers because that's what you modeled. And so what we got to be willing to do is say, God, I want you to change my heart. And I want you to show me, help me to see people as you see them, to love them as you love them, to forgive them as you forgive them, to serve them as you serve them. And God, that's what I want to do. So I want to live that way for my kids so that my kids will not grow up with a corrupt heart, but they'll grow up with peace. And so we've got to be willing to say, God, I want you to work on my heart. Change my heart. Start with my heart. So if we really want to live, you know, at peace with everybody, we've got to be willing to obey the Holy Spirit. And there's plenty of times we feel the Holy Spirit. We sense the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is convicting us of things. We're just not obedient. We're not obedient. I promise you, there's been times whenever you felt the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart, telling you, hey, listen, you need to go confess that to someone. You need to go lay that down on the altar. And you sit there and you'll just find you won't be obedient. You walk out of here and you realize, you know what, man? I, I should have gone down to the altar. I should have dealt with that. There's been times whenever maybe God says, hey, listen, I want you to go speak to this person and I want you to make things right with them. And you don't do that. And that person breathes their last breath. And you go, man, I should have gone and seen them. I wasn't obedient to the Holy Spirit. There's been times that you or your spouse did something. And you know that you should have said, hey, I'm sorry. But you think, you know, man, I'll, I'll just deal with that later. And you don't. So you're disobedient to the Holy Spirit. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. So there's times that the Holy Spirit is telling us what to do, and we've got to be willing to be obey the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5 talks about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So if I have the Holy Spirit living within me, Jesus died on the cross for me. The Father sent his son Jesus to die on the cross that I might live. Jesus said, hey, I'm sending one that's a comforter. He said he's going to place his spirit within me. So Jesus lives within me in the form of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit produces fruit in my life and it should produce fruit in every believer's life and so if you ever wonder if somebody's a believer look at the fruit in their life if they don't have the fruit of the spirit in their life they probably don't have the spirit of the living god living within them they may say well hi mike i i've been going to church all my life like the guy told me last night doesn't matter you know you may you may have grown up around christianity you may have grown up around the church you may have served on a church staff and still be lost and not know Christ personally. But if you don't have the spirit of the living God, you won't have this kind of fruit in your life. So let's look at what the fruit, kind of the fruit uh, it produces. Love, joy, and peace. So if you want peace in your life, number one, it starts with Jesus, right? You putting your faith in Christ, Jesus putting his spirit within you. And then therefore you have the fruit of, of peace in your life because of what Jesus did. Because of what the Holy Spirit is bringing into your life. So we have love, we've got love for people. Not pretending to love them, but really love them. We have joy, you know, joy in our, in our heart, joy on our face. We have peace. We have patience. That's a hard one, right? That has to be divine. That is the fruit of the Spirit. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. These are the things that we all should desire and want. But the thing is, is if you don't have those fruits in your life, and you have the opposite of those, then you have to ask, man, do I have the, am I obeying the Spirit? Am I surrendering to the Spirit? Or does the Spirit of the living God live within me? Here's another one we need to do. We need to mind our own business and work on our responsibilities. That sounds kind of harsh, but, you know, like my sons, I've, I've told you all this before, you know, I'd have all three of them working, doing something, and one of them would want to come tell me what the other one wasn't doing. And it would be like, Daddy, he's not doing, and I was like, hey, listen, if you'll just do what I told you to do, we'll be good. You go do what, you'll, what I told you to do, and you'll be rewarded. I'll deal with them. But right now, you're not doing your job. You're over here whining and complaining about them. So, you know what? I'm going to have to deal with you and him. You know, and so he, would, he wasn't minding his own business. He wasn't doing his own task. He had to worry about somebody else. Now, some of you guys, you like to be all up in everybody else's business, right? Just being straight up. Some of you guys love to be all up in somebody else's business. That's why you love gossip. That's why you like to be in the know. You want to be in the know about what's going on. And some of the stuff, you don't need to know. You know, you know it, like, like it says, mind your own business. Let me show you what it says in Scripture. Make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business. That's scripture, right? That ain't Mike just telling you that. That's the word of God saying that. And work with your hands just as we instructed you before. Stay on your task. Do what you've been told to do, right? And, and mind your own business. Don't get all up in everything. Like I said, you may be the drama queen. You love it. You want to you be a part of that. You want to throw your little two bits in. And some of you just need to mind your own business. You need to step back, stay focused. And there's times that you need to be involved. That's when the Holy Spirit leads you. It goes back to the first one. You obey the Holy Spirit. 
And so we've got to be able to say, God, help me, to, help me to do these things that will help me to love everyone, to really be at peace with everyone. Here's another, let go of offenses. We've all been offended. I've been offended. I probably offended you. you know, but the thing is, is we, we have all been offended. We deal with offenses, but we've got to be willing to let those offenses go. And so everybody has been offended. I'm just telling you, we've all been offended. Uh, we've all offended God. That's why we are sinners. That's why we are in need of a Savior. We have offended God. We have offended a holy God. So we've got to be willing to let go of our offenses by confessing them to God and letting God take those away from us. But look at this. It says, so if you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar and go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. So what we bring today is a sacrifice of praise. We come in and we lift holy hands unto the Lord. Hopefully, we sing you know, these songs to, the, to God. We honor Him with our words. We honor Him with the lyrics. We honor Him with our hearts. We honor Him with our passion. Hopefully, that's what we did. I know a lot of times we get so caught up in who's around us and all that stuff that we miss that that's why we're here. That's why we have gathered, right? But so it says, though, if you have an issue with someone or you know someone who has an issue with you, before you come in and worship, so maybe you need to go back out in the lobby and get on the phone and say, hey, listen, I want to ask you to forgive me. Or listen, hey, I know you're mad at me about this, and I'm sorry, can we talk about this and work this out? Because I really want to go in here and worship in truth and in spirit, and I really can't do that right now because I've got an issue with you or you've got an issue with me. And so if we were really willing to work at reconciling relationships the way that Scripture talks about, man, our worship would be so much sweeter. And so would the relationships that we have in life. So we've got to be willing to say, God, I want you to search my heart. Even right now, there may be some of you that you go, you know what, I know there's people that are mad at me, and there's people that I hate. And so, God, I want you to deal with my heart right now. And, I, God, I don't want to walk out of here and step into another moment until I have dealt with this, this issue that I've got in my heart. It says, now I make uh, one more appeal. This is Paul writing to Romans. He says, now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and set up people's faith, upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. Now, a lot of times you're thinking, oh, he's talk, probably talking about other teachers and other pastors. No, no I, I think there's some of the people in our life that they teach us things that are contrary to God's word. And look at it again. It says, and now I make one more appeal. My dear brothers and sisters, watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. That's God's word. He said, you've been taught a certain thing. You've been taught that Jesus prayed for unity. And if you've got people that are teaching you to stir things up and to cause division, stay away from them. Watch out for them. There's certain people, that I'll just tell you this, you need to live at peace with all people. There's some people you say, you know what, we're going to have to live at peace apart. I, I can't have you in my life. You are toxic. And I, I can't have you in my life because every time I get around you, man, I go south. And we've got to be willing to say, God, I, I want to do something different. God, I need you to show me what steps to take. Such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They're serving their own personal interest. And let me tell you, that could be somebody right here in church. That could be somebody on staff. That could be somebody at work. I could be somebody in your home. You got to be able to say, you know what, God, show me how to deal with this. And if I need to distance myself from them, I need to distance myself from them. They're serving their own personal interests by smooth talking and glowing words that deceive innocent people. And so maybe you've got somebody around you, man, they're, they're whispering all these things into your ear and you hear that and you go, that's how I should respond. But it's contrary to the word of God. Then you go, you know what, that's not what I need to be following. Like, girl, I wouldn't put up with that type deal. You know what I'm saying? Or if I was you, I would leave, whatever. And here's the thing. You're committed to a marriage. You stay in that marriage. You do what God's Word says, not what your buddies are telling you. You got to be willing to line up with what God's Word says, not what someone is whispering in your ear. And then here's something I think that a lot of us are looking for and a lot of us need. It's peace of mind. We can lay in the bed at night and you can worry about things. You can fret about things. And man, you just, you, like, you don't know, you don't know where to go. And you don't know what you don't you don't know where to turn. But God's word says we do know where to turn. In Philippians 4, 6 and 7, one of my favorite passages here, it says, Don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. And tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. And so that's what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to thank God for what he's done. We're, we're to pray about things. If you're worrying, they don't need praying. If you're praying, they don't need worrying, right? So those things, those things cancel each other out. Verse 7 says this, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. This is the peace that passes understanding when you hear people talk about this. His peace will guard your hearts. as your heart, because your heart can get right, wrong, right? It can become corrupt. Every man's heart is messed up. That's why we need Jesus. 
to every heart. So it guards our heart and it guards our minds as you live in Christ Jesus, as you live out your faith, as you walk out a holy life, as you live as one set apart, as you live that one is, that is honorable. If you live your faith out in such a way that, man, people go, there's something different about him or something different about her, it's because you're following Jesus. That's why. And so the more that we live out our faith, the more that we have peace of mind for ourselves as well. So peace with God, peace with God is a gift. So here's the thing. We want to have peace with God, and we want to have peace with people. We want to have peace of mind. So how do we have peace with God? John, Jesus, Jesus says this in John 14, 27. I am leaving you with a gift. It's a gift. Peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. So Jesus is speaking this. And I, I've shared this before. You know, it's like we often think, well, I've got to earn that. I've got to get that somehow. It's like if I said, hey, I'm going to give you my truck. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign the title over to you. I'll take care of everything. And I'll give you that truck. And it's yours. Here's the keys. But, hey, you got to go wash that truck. I don't care if it's a 25 cent wash job. It just went from a gift to you've got to earn it. And too often that's what we do with Jesus. We go, Jesus, hey, I know you want to give me a gift, but I, I know I got to earn it. No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're cheapening what Jesus did on the cross if you try to earn what he, did, what he has paid for. And so he's giving you a gift. Just say, thank you. Jesus, I received the gift of salvation. Jesus, I received what you gave me. I received the gift of peace. And so every believer, every person who's put their faith in Christ can have peace, not based on your circumstances. But it's a gift from, from God through Jesus Christ. Romans says this, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. That's how you have peace, right? It's because of what Jesus did. We talked about it last week, the cross and the resurrection. It's not by anything I've done. It's by what Jesus has done. That's how we have peace. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into the place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. We don't deserve it. Nobody deserves it. It's what we get. It's called grace. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. And one day, man, we'll, we'll be able to worship with the angels, man. You know, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Jesus paid for us to have peace. Look at this. It says we can rejoice too. I, I love this. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that we have, that they help us develop endurance. So when we get, get into tough situations we don't go man you're fretting you're worrying you're stressed out you rejoice that's what scripture says right so we rejoice we say man i'm going through a tough time but man i thank god that he gives me everything that i need his grace is sufficient he will he will see me through this he's got this god's got this i'm not going to worry about it i'm not going to fret about it i'm not going to be anxious about it i'm going to have peace because that's what he promised me and here's the thing i'm going to trust him and I know that he is all powerful and he is all knowing. He is all present. So even if I can't be with that person that I feel like is going through a tough time, Jesus can. So we rejoice. We rejoice in the middle of that. And endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Man, we know without a shadow of a doubt that he lives within us and I'm his child. I'm part of his family. And the more that I go through things, the more I realize, you know, the enemy's against me. And God has just proven over and over again that he's got me. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. I love that. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So if you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, if you have, this, if you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, if you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit, it's a, it's a, it's a deposit of God's love that brings conviction. And hopefully even today we are feeling that Holy Spirit prod and work in our hearts and bring that conviction. So the best thing we can do is receive God's gift of peace today. Maybe you're here today and you've never received the gift of salvation. Maybe you've been to church, you know, you know, you know a lot of the Bible, but man, you've never, you've never received that gift. Maybe you're still trying to earn it. Maybe, maybe those of you that are watching online, you're trying to earn salvation. You're trying to figure out, how do I get there? And you don't realize, man, it's just a gift. I receive it by faith. It's by faith in what Christ has done. Not what I do. It's by faith in what he's done. It's not how good I can be. It's how good he was. It's what he did. And we receive that. And I, I love this last one here. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. So the more that we grow in our understanding of who God is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, the more that I grow in that, the more peace that I have. 
So right now, maybe you're spending all your time chasing the things of the world and you're, not, you're, you're getting less and less peace and more and more anxiety, and more and more stress, and more and more tension and drama. Maybe you ought to change what you're focused on and say, you know what, I'm going to focus on Jesus, the author and perfecter of my faith. And I'm going to chase after him and I'm going to trust him and I'm going to surrender to him and I'm going to grow in my knowledge and understanding of who he is and he's going to fill me with his peace. No matter what I go through, no matter what's going on at work, no matter what's going on at school, no matter what's going on in the election, no matter what's going on with earthquakes and eclipses or anything else, I'll trust him because he's got me and I've got peace. I want to ask you just to bow your heads and close your eyes. Do you really have peace? Do you have the peace that passes understanding? Do you have the spirit of the living God living within you? Do you feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit? Do you feel the peace and the comfort that comes from knowing Christ? Knowing that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Knowing that you're a child of, the, of God, you're, a, you're, a, you're co-heirs with Christ, you're a child of the King. And I hope you do. Maybe you're here, maybe you're watching online, you've never received the gift of salvation. But you realize today you need that peace that only comes through Christ. You say, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. The way to God, the truth, the life that I have been looking for. So Jesus, I'm asking you, will you come into my life? Will you be my Lord? I confess to you that I'm a sinner. And I want to quit living the way I've been living, but I want to live for you. That's repentance. But Jesus, with all the faith that I have, I receive the gift of salvation. I receive the gift of peace. If you just prayed that prayer, would you raise your hand? Anybody in the room, just raise it high and say, Mike, I just... Prayed that prayer with you to receive Christ. Anybody? I see your hand over here. I see your hand over there. My prayer is the peace of God covers you. And that you know that you're a child of God. Part of the family of God. And that's never to be taken away. Welcome to the family of God. There's a lot of believers in this room... So my question for you is, do you really have peace? You say, Mike, I have prayed to receive Christ. But I'm asking you, do you have peace? Are you seeking after Him? Are you learning from Him? Are you grabbing the things of the world and chasing after them more than you're chasing after Him? In just a minute, we're going to give a, the altar is going to be open. We're going to give an invitation. You're welcome to come to the altar. There may be some things you need to lay down. And maybe the Holy Spirit has told you to go and lay those things down, but you're, you're, you're negotiating with Him right now. Just trust Him. Maybe you need to go ask someone to forgive you. Maybe you need to call someone today and say, hey, listen, will you forgive me? Or you know that they, they have an issue with you. You need to go to them and make peace, reconcile. Father, thank you for meeting with us today. And God, only you know every detail of our life. You know where we stand. You know what we're holding on to. You know whether we're holy or not. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would bring conviction right now in every heart in this room and that we would do business with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All across the room, if you guys would stand, you respond as the Holy Spirit would lead you. But the altars are open. The prayer team's here. Our worship team will lead us.